So what we're going to talk about is associations and foreign keys. And the goal here is to be able to have multiple bits of data that are linked together. So in our Movies app today, we've done a Movies model, where we have a title, a description, and so on. We have a Users model, so that people could log into this app. And now we're going to talk about adding content, which is associated with some other content. So in this model, right, each movie can have a review. We're going to give it a rating for potatoes, because this is Rotten Potatoes, out of five. 8 out of 10, whatever scale you might be, but some data about this movie that associates it uh, as a review to a particular movie. And so how do we easily represent this uh, in a database? So we really want to be able to say something like, given some movie, let me create a review for this movie, and let me say that this review is perhaps built by some particular user. So the, the type of code that we're going to try and write is going to say something like movie, you know, find, find a movie, find a moviegoer, create some review in our database, and associate that review with, in this case, uh, not just a movie, but also the moviegoer or the user. And why might we want to do that? Well, we might want to say you know, that when we have a review, that some particular user wrote that review for that particular movie. And in the database world, uh, we call these associations. So what we need to think about here is just a little bit of database knowledge about how we can join and link data together. So in our, in our database, we have essentially as many tables as we need. But we can imagine here perhaps that we have a table of reviews and perhaps a table of artists as this example. You could imagine they're movies, users, whatever. And our goal is going to be to combine these two tables into a single unified table. And the standard way to do this is what's called the Cartesian product. And this says basically give me every single combination of, of table one with every additional combination of row of table two. So here we have two tables that each have three rows, is what's shown. The Cartesian product would be nine total rows. So every combination of A and with every combination of B, essentially. And what this allows us to do is say, given any two records, let's find some sort of linking between them. Of course, in practice, what's going to happen is that the Cartesian product gives us way more combinations than we actually need. If I have a table of reviews that has reviews for dozens of movies, and I have a table of dozens of movies, what I really want to do is link up each review with a single correct movie, right? There's no use in having a review that's left for Inception being shown up alongside a review for Top Gun or Barbie or whatever movie we might want to pick. And so what we're going to do is we're going to join two tables together on some particular key in our database. And this is where we get into this idea of what we're going to call foreign keys. So our Cartesian product here is going to take two tables. It's going to combine them into every single possible combination. And essentially, our goal will then be to filter this data down using a particular set of keys that allow us to pick out just the rows that are linked together. Uh, and that's going to be the goal of associations in our application. So how do we represent this? We're going to represent this with the idea of foreign keys. So in this model, we're going to introduce the reviews model. So in the app that we're going to use today, I've already run the database migration to create the reviews table. It's not you know, particularly exciting. It's the exact same stuff we've done before. But we have a table with at least these three columns. Uh, there will be more later, but we have a reviews table which has an ID. So remember, every table has a primary key. Uh, this is a unique identifier. It's going to have a new column that we're going to call a foreign key. And this is going to be movie underscore ID. And of course, it's going to have the potatoes rating column, along with probably a description. And later, we'll talk about other kinds of associations. But what is this movie ID thing doing? Oops, excuse me. The movie ID is going to be a reference to a specific row in the movies table. So uh, essentially, if I have a movie ID of one, and I have review, which has a column whose movie ID value is also one, I know that those two things are representing the same kind of movie. And in Rails and in most conventions, the way that we can think about this thing is, how do I know what this is referring to? Well, if I have a reviews table, movie underscore ID is going to refer to the movies table and the ID column of that table. You can, of course, break this convention, but it's going to be a helpful one to follow. And this is going to allow Rails and, and our database to link up these two things dynamically. So 
how does this work in, in the database? Well, uh, we know that the goal of Rails and Active Record is to minimize the amount of SQL that we're going to write. So when we see SQL statements here, it's really about explaining what's going on under the hood. Um, but we're going to have uh, Active Record help us write these queries. So uh, we're going to use joins. Um, and relational databases are fantastic at joining data across models. There are decades of research that are built into making these things fast and efficient. But essentially what I'm going to say is select everything if I want from two tables now, not just one, but movies and reviews. And what are the rows I want? I want only the combinations of data where movies.id is equivalent to reviews.movieid. And this is essentially saying, build that combination, that Cartesian product, but show me only the ones where this ID is, is equivalent. And so when we have this structure set up, this join becomes easy to do in Rails, and it becomes easy to execute.